Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new season of Benchwire Podcast, Season 3, Episode 1. It's a new league year. We're getting into the NFL offseason. Free agency has begun. The free agency friends that we all love to hear and talk about. Here we are today. I'm joined by Justin. How are we doing, Justin? Pretty good, Steve. Pretty good. Uh, free agency so far has been fun. It's been keeping me entertained, energetic, mm-hmm. excited for this upcoming year. So it's been a fun couple of days. Good way to start the week. For sure. So how we're going to get into this. So this is like a podcast. We're going to be talk about every team's moves that they made so far in free agency. And we're just going to go alphabetically right down the list. As you can see right here on the screen, if you're on YouTube, we're going to go with the Cardinals first. It's by the city. So Arizona, we're going to go all the way down to Washington. So that's how we're going to do this whole like free agency reaction type deal. So let's just jump into it, right? So the Cardinals, who did they sign? We're just going to talk about the big guys. We're not going to mention every little name because that will be here forever then. So today they signed Jonah Williams, tackle, two-year deal, $30 million. They're replacing DJ Humphreys, their tackle that they've had for many years, and they got a new franchise tackle. And then they also signed another big name is Sean Murphy Bunting from the Buccaneers. Three-year deal, $25.5 million. A solid signing for sure for the Cardinals. I don't know if they had a great um, offseason, but like as of right now, I would give this like a B minus C plus to a start for their offseason free agencies. And we're also going to give a grade for all these teams on what they've done so far. But Joe, those two are the big like highlights of their free agency signings i would give that like a b minus to a c plus yeah murphy bunning and jonah williams are the two noble signs there for sure uh i like murphy bunning as a player um obviously congrats to all these players on getting bags they deserve it never gonna question the money they get paid i kind of thought low-key murphy bunning was a true i thought he got traded but i guess not i guess he was a free agent uh, I must have thought wrong, but it was the other guy yeah. talking about. We'll talk about him later. Oh, Carlton Davis, I think. Yeah, it's Carlton something. Davis. Okay, he went to the I knew line. A Bucks... yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew a Bucks corner got traded. Um, I'm gonna go a little lower. See, um, I guess they got kind of better. They got better protection for Kyler. They helped their secondary play a little bit, but nothing that moves the needle. They're not getting past uh, Seattle, San Francisco. It's still like yeah. third their best team in the division. It's not going to move the needle. They should probably look to trade a Buda Baker, acquire more draft capital, and get younger and build the team. So, But they didn't splurge a, a lot, per se. So I, yeah. I'm indifferent about it. Just to see. It's just okay. Nothing, yeah. nothing like, oh, wow, to me. Yeah, don't blame you. Respectable. They didn't do yeah. really anything special. But for what they did, I gave it. A B minus C plus. Um, next up, we're moving on to the Atlanta Falcons. So the big signing that they did, right? Kirk Cousins. They finally got their franchise quarterback. Four years, one hundred and eighty million. Man's making forty five million a year. He deserved the bag. He's been solid for the Vikings. They've only gotten one playoff once. So I don't know how much this signing is gonna make the Falcons be contenders now, but it definitely puts them on the map and potentially they could win a division now that they finally have a franchise quarterback. I like the signing. I like it a lot because there wasn't any other quarterbacks really out there. We'll see how he is off the Achilles, but it's a solid signing for sure. Darnell Mooney got him, got him a weapon in Kirk Cousins. So Darnell Mooney, three-year deal, $39 million dollars. I'm going to rate the Falcons offseason so far as a B plus. I'll give it a B plus because we don't know how well Kirk Cousins is going to be off the Achilles. And, you know, you got to see how the coach is in Raheem Morris. Yeah. So right now I'll give it a B plus for what they did in free agency. Yeah, I'm not too far off. I'm going to give it a B. Uh I thought for the life of me, Kirk Cousins would stay because, like, you know, Jay Jettis, the best receiver in football, my opinion, uh, is in Minnesota. That's a That was a good tandem. They had good success. But, no, he opts to go to Atlanta. He gets paid a bag, $45 million a year. Congrats to him. Uh, anyone that's coming into the league, the quarterback, uh, take notes from him. He's just 
knows how to get paid after paid from Washington getting franchise tag, going to Minnesota, getting the bag, now getting the bag with Atlanta. Good for him. Happy for him. Uh, we could. I'm not going to say he doesn't deserve it. He only has one playoff win, but, hey, he's a good quarterback. He was top 10 quarterback this year for sure. He, he balled out before he got hurt for sure. Uh, Donna Mooney, serviceable, serviceable receiver. He could do some things for that team. They got Drake London, Kyle Pitts there, just named a couple guys. So their offense could be fun. I don't know the OC's name, but I believe uh, Raheem Morris had to have pulled him from McFay's tree somehow. So I think if you have like a Bobby Slowick effect or when uh, D'Amico left and he pulled Bobby Slowick from the Kyle Shanahan tree, if they can kind of find uh, a rhythm, Kirk, Kirk Cousins can find a rhythm, they can get guys open, maybe get Kyle Pitts more involved. Even Bashad Robinson the ball, he should be there. Three down running back more, feature Ty, Tyra Algier less. I could see them maybe, they can maybe win the South, to be honest with you. So I like the moves. Uh, that's just because the South's a little bit weaker. I'm not saying they're, they're not a Super Bowl team, but they yeah. could potentially win the South because I, I do think Kirk Cousins makes that difference for them. It'll help their offense. But, yeah, I'm going to give it a B, though. I'm just going to be slightly under you. But, yeah, nothing to sneeze at. I like it, especially when you got Jesse Bates the year before. So I, I, I kind of like him where the Falcons are headed. Yeah. It's a solid move and sets up their future. You know, you finally got a franchise quarterback for the next four years. So that's good to have. Uh, next up, go to the Baltimore Ravens now. We're traveling to Baltimore. Um, the real big move they did was they signed a running back. They finally got a franchise running back in Derrick Henry. Two-year deal, $16 million. That's a guy that they have had their eye on last year, but they couldn't get a trade done at the trade deadline. He's a free agent. Finally got him, secured him. King Henry's going to be great with Lamar Jackson. I think the read option is going to be great for sure. You know, puts another element to their offense. And you got Zay Flowers and company, Mark Andrews. Like, that offense is going to be great for sure. I like the signing. And it's only a two-year deal, only $8 million, not even that much. And then they also re-signed another big deal, Justin Matabike, four years, $98 million. Mans is getting paid. He got the bag. Good for him. Oh, no, it's, it's a solid, solid offseason so far to start for the Ravens. They're not going to do a lot of moves because they don't have that much cap space. But for what they did, I'll give it a B-plus as well. I'll give it a B-plus because Derrick Henry, he's going to transform your offense. And now the opposing defense are going to have to worry about Derrick Henry. They're going to have to worry about Lamar and all the other, you know, pass catchers out there for Baltimore. So I'll give it a B-plus. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, kind of, I'm with you on that. I'm like tinkering between B plus. I don't think I want to give it A minus. I would put it A if somehow they kept Patrick Queen and he didn't let him get to go to a division rival. So I think that kind of ticks points. But but like you said, they have you have so much in your cap, so you can't keep everyone. But I do think that's going to hurt the defense a little bit, especially if Mike McDonald goes too. But like you said, Justin Matabike, well deserved. He balled out. They, they extended him. And, yeah, Derrick Henry, think of, like, Gus Edwards. I know you had Gus Edwards. You enjoyed having him, right? Just imagine Gus Edwards with all the rushing touchdowns he has. And just basically Derrick Henry is Gus Edwards, but, like, times 1,000. He's like Gus Edwards on steroids. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Times 10. So, he, like, not to give fantasy advice. I know we're too early, but <laughs> draft coming up, I would be pretty bullish on drafting Derrick Henry. So I think I could just see a lot of touchdowns happen in there. Like, I think, like, him and Saquon were, like, the top two highest because their lines weren't that good last year. They got tackled behind the line a lot. And with both of them, they're going to better teams with good own lines. So they're going to get a lot of positive yards. And in Henry's case, I could see a lot of, a lot of touchdowns for sure for him. There's a lot of goal line, hand it off, run behind their good own line. A lot of touchdowns there. So that's – Good. Their offense improved. Their defense took a hit. So if they kept Patrick Queen, I do think it's still an A, but I'm going to go with B plus just because he lost Patrick Queen. Yeah, good point of bringing up Patrick Queen. Yeah. I totally forgot about that because it doesn't say they lost Patrick Queen in there, but, you know, all in all. That's, that's significant. Yeah, that is. I love I loved the Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen duo, and now you don't have it. Yeah. So you can't pay I guess both. he got Malik Harrison. Guys. I, he's not no Patrick Queen. I'm sorry. 
I, I don't even know if it's a death sign. I don't know who's going to fill that. Did they draft yeah. someone? We'll see. It's only one year. I don't even know how much it is. It's probably not we'll that see. much. We'll see. And the fact that Hurts worse is it, they went to the Steelers. So I know Ravens fans are not happy about that one. Yeah. And Geno Stone, too. He yeah. was another good safety. He goes to Cincy. So they went to division guys. They basically said, yeah, we played the Ravens. Their defense is elite. Let's take a couple of their best players from them. So Geno Stone goes to kind of nice, but not that he's as good as Jesse Bates, but he's they missed him. So they're kind of like, we need to get a good safety. So and we like Geno Stone. He balled out. Let's take him. Let's put him in our secondary. And then, yeah, Patrick Queen was great. And the Steelers like, we love linebackers. Let's, let's, get, let's get him. He balled out. That hurts. So it does. I give it a B plus. Yeah. All right, moving on. We're going to Buffalo now. And he did a lot of work at this offseason. They cut a lot of guys, right? So to name a few, they cut Jordan Poyer, their center, Mitch Morse, uh, Naeem Hines, Deontay Hardy, and Tredavious White. Those are big guys that they've relied on in the past few years, and now they're gone. They had to free up some cap space. And who they signed? They signed the legend, Mitch Trubisky, to be their backup quarterback, right? And then they extended their left tackle, Deion Dawkins. I like that move. He's one of the best tackles in our game right now. Say so he's top 10. And then other than that, they really didn't do anything splashy, right? Other than maybe re-signing AJ Epinenza for two years, 12 million. Other than that, they got like Nicholas Morrow and all that. So I don't know if they got better. I don't think they really got better. I think they got worse. So I'll give them a C. I'll give them a C because – they had to do a lot of cap space work and they had to release a lot of guys that, you know, were kind of crucial to their playoff run and were guys that were making impact plays for them. So I, I don't know if the Bills actually improved this offseason. I feel like they got worse. They did sign Mitch Trubisky. He's a nice little insurance policy for Josh Allen. But like other than that, locking up Deion Dawkins, they really didn't do much. So I'm going to see because you locked up your your – Left tackle, your franchise tackle. I like that, but you lost a lot of pieces, and they're going to have to do more work through the drafts. So right now I'll give it a C. Uh, before I give mine, uh, I have a question for you, since you may know this. Post June 1st for Tredavious White, does that mean he has to wait till June 1st to get cut and then negotiate a contract sign with the team? Or can he negotiate a contract but not sign it until June 1st? How does that work? If I believe the way I think it is, I believe they can't do anything until after he is cut. So I think he he's not is officially cut. He's not officially cut until June first because they will save more money that way. So I believe he can't do anything. Yeah. And he's held hostage till June first. So he's got three months to right. I don't know, get in shape, figure life out, and you know, just start mapping out where he wants to go and who has cap space available after the draft so yeah we don't know where he's gonna land we'll find out eventually um but yeah i think he can't do anything until after june 1st so yeah that's what i thought too because they're cutting june 1st like you said the same cap okay anyway i'm not we're not talking about all the cap rules um i didn't hear you mention him but he's not listed uh gabe davis is not there anymore either he's in jacksonville so that's yeah like, or loss, another playmaker. And another thing, too, what the hell is going to happen with Stephon Diggs? Is he going to stay? Does he hate Josh Allen's guts? Does he hate Buffalo? <laughs> is he going to go play with Patrick Mahomes next? What's going to happen? What's what's going on there? <laughs> That's my next thing. Uh, I pretty I, I give this like a D. I, I think they got worse. Uh, they ha- I guess they had to shed some salary. And then and this is coming from, like, I like what Brandon Bean has done. Right, he put teams in the playoffs. They had success and everything. They built a good culture there, but we lost a couple of culture guys with Poyer, Tre'Davious White, and now you got to replace them. And I, I don't know if you have the draft assets to really replace that and expect them to perform right away. It's going to take some development there. I don't know. I'm going to give it a D. I don't think they got better. They're in the. I, I I don't know. They could they could lose it. The Dolphins could sneak up and win it, and maybe we see the Jets healthy. Maybe I'm not a fan of the Jets, but maybe it's the Dolphins' division to win now. But there's a lot of question marks with the Bills. I don't know what's going to happen with Diggs. All I guarantee sure thing is that Josh Allen's going to be back. That's all that I know for sure. sure. 
Yeah. That's all. And he's a top five quarterback. I get that. And that's good enough. It's good enough a reason to still take him. But whatever, if they have Diggs, and sure, I guess I'll take him. But you got a lot, of, a lot to replace now for cheap. I don't even know what their cap – I don't even know what the cap is looking at. So you resize yeah. – all right, yeah, I know that. Just brought, the new guys brought in Mitch Trubisky, backup. Okay, knows knows the system, knows Josh Allen, knows the area, knows a little bit of the system. Yeah, they didn't bring anybody good. It yeah. was just extending Moore, guys. It was on my Eagles. Indifferent about him. <laughs> okay, not yeah. to replace Gabe Davis for sure. Maybe they'll bring back Isaiah Hodgins. I don't know because Giants aren't keeping him. Yeah. I guess he could help. He can Maybe. help, but that's not a it's not a game changer. Mac, you have Shakir, Mac Collins, and Diggs right now. And, and I don't I don't know if Diggs is pressing to get out or not. I, I think Diggs is gonna stay. He's not due for a contract. He's getting paid like a wide receiver one. I think he's gonna stay. Now they lost Gabe Davis. I think he would stay. Well, his, his targets are going to go up. He's like, well, shit, they better throw it to me every damn time because who else do we have? We have no running back to hand it off to, really. Yeah. Right. They have no one really to throw it to, except maybe Dolan Kincaid and Dawson Knox, but that's about it. Yeah, I feel like they'll use the tight ends more. Uh, I think yeah, I Dawson Knox, he restructured his deal to make – or to stay on the team to save cap space, so – He's staying. We don't want to watch 12 personnel. One one receiver, one back, two tight ends. They're going to have to. They're going to have to play bigger. They can always sign a running back, too. There's still guys out there. Yeah, there's A.J. Dillon out there. There's Aaron Jones. But they have to come in kind of cheap. Like you, could get Aaron, you could get A.J. Dillon cheap. I don't know. Yeah, he's a budget guy. Budget friendly. I don't, I don't know about. He might go to the Cowboys, though, I saw. So, who knows? Uh, they're they're missing we'll running back. Uh, we'll talk about that. I can't wait to talk about that. <laughs> they're all in my ass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know you saw that. I did um, see that tweet. All right. Let's move on. Carolina. They made some nice acquisitions, I would say. They signed some offensive linemen, you know, to help out Bryce Young and keep him upright. They got Robert Hunt. And Damian Lewis locked them up for four to five years. They're making some sh money. They also got A. Sean Robinson to beef up that D line. Nice little deal. Three years, twenty-two and a half million. And they also acquired via trade from the Steelers Deontay Johnson. I like that move a lot. Getting Bryce Young another weapon. And other than that, they did lose uh, Brian Burns. We'll talk about that. He was traded to the Giants. We'll talk about that when we get to the Giants side of things. Um, but, and they also signed Dane Jackson. So I think they had a stellar start to, you know, the off season. Um, I don't know getting a second and a fifth for Brian Burns when you were offered two first from the Rams last year, uh, is the right move, but it is what it is. Um, uh, but yeah, I like, I like the moves that they got for the offensive line, help out Bryce Young, keep him up. Right. And then you get in a weapon form as well. in Deontay Johnson, who just, you know, was never a great weapon for Kenny Pickett and the Steelers. He just wasn't anything really, really wasn't really productive. I think, you know, they could change that with the Panthers. So I like the move all in all, I'll, I'll give them a B I'll give them a B right now for, the acquisitions they got on the offensive line and the receiver they got in Deontay Johnson. You give it what grade? B? A B. Okay. Uh, it wasn't that, like, Deontay Johnson was productive. He was a good receiver. I just think towards the end there, he was disengaged. There's effort uh, questions there where he gave up on some blocks. And uh, hence, if he blocked the guy, he uh, – Najee fumbled, the defender picked it up and took it. There's this effort, things like that. And I think for the Pittsburgh Steelers, when you don't play with effort, Mike Tomlin's going to be pissed off, and that's not going to hold well with the Roonies and all that. So I guess it was on thin ice there, so they do move him. Makes a lot of sense for for the Panthers to bring him in, right? You want to get Bryce on the shot. And I do like um, the guards they brought in. Not, they're, not, they're pretty good. They seem like they got to give him a lot of money there. Five years, 100 million. Congrats to Robert Hunt there. But I'm going to give it like a C minus because you trade Brian Burns when you could have got two first round picks. And yeah. And a fifth there. You could, 
And then I know new uh, David Tepper changes up a lot. So the guy that came in, he just basically had to make a move and he just basically settled with Brian Burns for whatever best he could get. And he felt like the Giants offer was, so he took it, obviously. But maybe if that GM was there, they would have taken the Rams deal. So last year, yeah. we would have gotten this conversation now. But I like the thought. I'm probably going to give it a C minus, though, just it because you can't – maybe maybe even a C because maybe you get three wins instead of two, I guess. <laughs> but you don't, you don't get any better. You just maybe protect Bryce Young a little bit more. You give him more of a shot to evaluate him, which Tepper wants to see. That's his guy. That's when Frank White got fired because he loved uh, Stroud. Uh, front office and ownership liked Young, so they went Bryce Young there. So they got to give him a shot. I think he can still play. So they're going to try to protect him, give him Deontay Johnson and Adam Thielen to work with. So I guess they'll give him a good shot, but yeah. Nothing moving the needle for me. C minus C CLS. Right. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Now we're traveling to Chicago. What do the Bears do? Let's see. They they locked up Jalen Johnson, stud corner. I like that move. Four years, year 76 mil. They got Kevin Byer, an older safety, but they needed help at safety, so I like that move. And they also got Jonathan Owens to complete – that safety core for that secondary. And then they also signed DeAndre Swift. He was the first guy to be signed in this free agency frenzy. Three years, $24 million. Not bad. $8 million a year for DeAndre Swift. I like what he did with the, the Eagles. Services. And he finally gets the bag. Yes. And, you know, a guy that maybe Caleb Williams or Justin Fields can rely on. We'll, we'll talk about Justin Fields. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, but they did release Eddie Jackson. And they got rid of their guard, Cody Whitehair. I like the moves that they made, but I don't know how many more wins it's going to give them. Um, all they really did was sign DeAndre Swift, Kevin Byer. Those are the big, like, move moves. Uh, I, I give it, like, a, a C plus. I give it a C plus. Um, I think DeAndre Swift will help your offense out a lot, but you still need more offensive linemen to help, you know, actually develop a run and, you know, build – uh, passing game for Caleb Williams or Justin Fields. All in all, it's all right. It's all right, but yeah, I would I would give it a C plus. Yeah, um, I, I think the biggest thing is probably re-signing Jalen Johnson. There, yeah, uh, well deserved. Um, he was a guy that I kind of wanted for the Eagles too, uh, because we need secondary help there, and I thought he would have been a good fit. But yeah, uh, Kevin Byard a little bit, a little bit on the pricier side. He's older too, but I, like you said, I understand it. Secondary help. He should, I, I honestly think he'll play better for Eberflus's defense than he did with the Patricia Desai, Patricia Desai whole debacle there. He'll be, he'll have a whole offseason to learn the scheme. He'll, he'll play better there than he did with us in the latter half of last year, too, and. DeAndre Swift, I'm intrigued a little bit by – with him and Khalil Herbert, the, the the split carries there. I will be interested to see how that works. And, yeah, it's kind of hard to say because I feel like a lot of what the Bears are going to do is not a free agency. It's in a draft. And if we were to come go back in a couple months and after the draft and say who made out better, I feel like I will raise my grade. I feel like it's like a, a C-. C. I'm going to give it a C. I didn't think – I don't think they got better, necessarily got worse. They didn't really lose anyone notable. Eddie Jackson, I guess, kind of hurts. But you get Kevin Byard, so I guess it drops not too bad there. Right? So, yeah, I'll give it a C. I don't think they got a whole lot better. Like one particular team in that division did, and there's another team that won the division, went to the NFC Championship game, so – they're, like a th they're probably going to finish third. They're probably going to finish ahead of the Vikings, in my opinion. But, yeah. yeah, I guess my point is we're going to have to see three months from now. There's a lot of questions of what they're going to do with Fields, Caleb, what's going to happen there. So, And I, I want to see how they draft, how they're going to fix that O-line. So I think it's a C. I don't, I don't think they're going to protect whoever comes to quarterbacks there that well. But I, I do like what Brian Poles is doing generally, though. He's trying to build. 
And I think he's doing making the right moves, but just not enough. Not something to say, wow, that's great. Yeah, so I'll give it yeah. a C. All right. Next up, we're going to Cincinnati now. Talk about them Bengals. Um they did some things, not you know, <laughs> great things that catch your eye, right? They franchise T. Higgins, but he is demanding a trade, so he'll probably be moved on from. Um, they signed Geno Stone, the safety from the Ravens. Um, they got Zach Moss. I like that move. Um, but they did lose Joe Mixon. I think Joe Mixon is a better back than Zach Moss, but they wanted to go on the budget side for a running back, so they got Zach Moss. And they just signed Sheldon Rankins. That just happened. That just went down. I like that move. Got to build that interior D-line, so I like that. But all in all, I don't think they got better. I think they got worse. Um, I'll give it a C minus. I'll give it a C minus. I, I like that they uh, – wait, it's missing somebody here. Where's Mike Kosicki? Mike Kosicki supposed to be on this list, correct? Yeah, he I, he did go there because there's yeah. the whole Jamar Chase thing teaching him how to gritty and stuff. Yeah. Like the gritty back. I, I like that move getting Joe Burrow a tight end because I don't feel like they had anyone that was that great last year. And they also re-signed Drew Sample, who is a decent, like, blocking tight end. Um, but they also did get Mike Kosicki. I don't know why it's not on this list. Um, but, yeah, I, I still right. give it a C minus. I don't think they got better. I think they got worse. And we, we got to see what they get. What we got to see what they got to do during the draft. I don't know what they're going to do. We're going to figure it out. But, yeah, Joe Burrow's got to get healthy. And we got to see, you know, what they get for uh, T. Higgins in the trade. So, Oh, no, I give a C minus. Yeah, I'm probably going to go D plus because um, he franchise tagged T. Higgins for, I believe, like 20 and a half somewhere, somewhere in low 20s. And he wants out, so you're probably going to move him. What does that mean? You trade him, you get Mike Williams. Is T. Higgins better than Mike Williams? I like. I would do. I would probably like – if he wants out, then I have to get someone because you're going to probably lose Tyra Boyd also because I think the owner's really, really cheap just from everything I've seen and everything. Like, they don't even have, like, an indoor practice facility. They have to borrow from University of Cincinnati. So they're a pretty cheap uh, organization. They don't splurge a whole lot in free agency. And so, yeah, I, I think they didn't get any war – they got worse. Like, Joe Mixon, really, you give him to the Texans for a seventh rounder and you get Zach Moss, you downgraded there. And you might lose T. Higgins. So who's Joe – Joe Burst is going to have Jamar Chase. It's kind of like – it's kind of like the bill, the Bills thing to me, honestly. I, I don't think it's quite as bad because at least you did. You're trying to mitigate the loss more than than the Bills have, so it's not as bad. But yeah, I, I guess I like the Sheldon Rankins deal that helps the D line. That's probably your best deal. And Geno Stone's good, but it's not like losing Jesse Bates. You should have just paid Jesse Bates. He's better than Geno Stone, in my opinion. And yeah, there's just a lot of uncertainties. Is Tyra Boy gone? Probably he's probably going somewhere, and T Higgins you probably will trade him too. So what does that mean? You're gonna get Mike Williams? I don't I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do there. So we gotta see. Do they draft someone? Maybe maybe they go in the first second round to get a receiver, but we'll see. Joe Burrow's gonna need help on offense though for sure. Yeah. So yeah, you give it a D plus. I give it a C minus. Yeah, um, not a good offense. They didn't get better. They got worse. They did, and their their division, unfortunately, is the most competitive, too. So yeah, it's not, so that's it's not good. good. It's not good to have a bad off season. All right, next up, we're going with the Cleveland Browns. Um, their big move that they did, they got Jerry Judy from the Broncos for like I think a fifth or a sixth, something like that. They yeah. didn't trade that much draft capital for him, you know, taking a chance on a guy that was supposed to be a really good receiver coming out of the draft class. And he wasn't. He never lived up to that first round pick. Um, I, I like the addition, you know, adding to another, adding a receiver to, you know, a, a loaded receiver room mm -hmm. already with uh, Amari Cooper and Elijah Moore. I like that a lot. Um, and he also got Zadarius Smith. You re signed him. I like that. Getting the edge rusher paired up with Miles Garrett and keeping that together because they were one of the better defenses last year. And I think Zadarius Smith is a great edge rusher. Jameis Winston, you're getting that backup quarterback. You need him because now Joe Flacco is gone. He went to Indianapolis, so I like that. Yep. Uh, Naeem Hines, he could be someone that 
you know, is going to be a good backup for Nick Chubb. I don't think they're going to bring back uh, Kareem Hunt. And they still have uh, – what's his name? I can't think of his name. What's that running back that they already have? What was it? Jerome Ford, Nick Chubb. Yeah, Jerome Ford. So yeah. you already got Nick Chubb, Jerome Ford, adding Naeem Hines. He could be a receiving back for you. I like that move. I like that. Um, but other than that, they really didn't get much better. And he also signed Jordan Hicks. They need another linebacker in there. So not a bad deal for two years, $8 million. Um, But all in all, they didn't really get much better. They're just replacing people that left. Their big addition was Jerry Judy. I give it like a, a C plus. I give it a C plus because he retains Darius Smith. You're adding another weapon in Jerry Judy, and you got another backup quarterback because Joe Flacco is gone. I'll give it a C plus. Yeah, I'm right with you. I'm I'm at C plus also. I like the Jerry Judy trade. I think that adds another layer. I think it'll be great in like a play action heavy scheme with uh, Stefanski. I think he'll. He'll enjoy that. He'll enjoy playing with Deshaun Watson, too, playing with a good quarterback, playing in a good system. I'll scheme him open, uh, playing number two, second fiddle, Amari Cooper and, and Joku. And Nick Chubb should hopefully be back. He's a great running back, too, up the running game. Crazy you forgot Jerome Ford, Steve, not going to lie, because he was on your fantasy team. I know. I was blanking, bro. That's blanking. pretty crazy. But, yeah, you you improved the defense. You, you signed uh, Sidarius Smith. That's going to help, too. It's going to help the, the rush. And that was really good. And Jordan Hicks is pretty is serviceable linebacker. We got him pretty cheap for four, four million a pop. That's not bad all, either, too. That's pretty good. They still got, like, JOK there and Delpit and uh, Denzel Ward. So your defense is still going to be solid. Jim Schwartz was really solid, too. And so I like I like, I like what the Browns did. Sneaky, sneaky good, not too splashy but not also horrible. So I think it's a little bit above average because I think they get a little bit better too. So yeah, C plus for me. Yeah. All right. Now let's talk about the team that really didn't do shit until like an hour ago. Um, so they re-signed their long snapper and a defensive That's guy, right. Carl Davis That's Jr. Right. But they finally signed somebody today, Eric Hendricks, linebacker. Stolen from the Niners. He agreed to go with the Niners, but he ended up, leaving and changing his mind and going to the Dallas Cowboys because he's got familiarity with Mike Zimmer. He's going to be a defensive play caller there. I like that move, but, like, you only made one move, Jerry Jones and company. You only made one move after you're saying going to be all in. Skip Bayless is not happy. All in my ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> comma. Make sure to have that comma in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, Eric pull, Hendricks. Pull up that tweet for the people at the end. <laughs> huh? We got to pull up that tweet for the uh, yeah, yeah. at the end, just in um, case. Want to <laughs> but uh, Eric Hendricks, bro, uh, I don't know if that's a game changer. The, the Dallas Cowboys have not gotten better with that move. It, I like that they signed him because he has familiarity with defense. But, like, I'm giving them, like, a D minus, bro. Like, only one move and you're trying to be a contender and you're trying to make a Super Bowl – with the team I already got, and you only made one move, that's that's depressing. You lost Tony Pollard, one of your best players on the offensive side of the ball, and I, I just don't get what they're doing there in Dallas. But, yeah, D-. minus. I wanted to give them an F, but they signed Eric Kendrick, so they got a D- minus because of that. So there you go. Mm, D- minus. that's pretty nice. I'm going to give them, like, F-, minus, 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 minus. Okay. I mean, because – they handled this cap so poorly. Like, why wouldn't they go up to Dak and say, hey, let's restructure? Bam, you get $20 million free right there. Just saying, like, $2 million under? They have no money to spend with, and they haven't said, hey, let's go to Dak, let's restructure this so we could sign this guy, this guy, this guy. And whoever else that needed to restructure, maybe restructure Trayvon Diggs, I'm not really sure. Um, turn more into, like, a signing bonus so that they can sign more. They didn't really do any of that with those guys. And it just kind of sat dormant. So what was uh, going all in, Mr. Jones? Um, working on a new DAC deal? Working on paying CD and Micah? Like, I don't, I don't get it. That's not really going all in. In my estimation, you have to go all in on free agency because you are you have a talented roster, don't get me wrong. But you also had a coach you're on the fence and, and firing and didn't really help him out. So if he fails, like, well, shit, you didn't really get me anything to do with. 
and yeah, I finished with 12 and five again because I didn't, it, nothing changed. <laughs> Actually, we got worse. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see if they bring in Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon type. But yeah, I'm going to give it like an F minus. They had the worst offseason. They didn't do anything at all, in my opinion. So it sucks. But yeah, there there's, you there's there you go, guys. Skip, for those that don't know, Skip is a notorious uh, Cowboys fan. So, and he's just poking fun at Look at that uh, comma. It's holding on to dear life. Yeah, he's holding on to <laughs> his sanity before he loses it. So, the comma. This is great. There. <laughs> Look at the My bull booger. You see, if it wasn't for that comma, this would have an entirely different meaning. Oh, my yeah. God. He knew what he was doing. All Skip's, right. pretty, Skip's pretty shrewd like that. He knew what he was doing. So yeah. he got the engagement he was looking for. But the Cowboys yes. not so engaged in free agency. I give it F minus. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's talk about the Denver Broncos. So they moved off of Mr. Unlimited. Russell Wilson is now gone. He is a Pittsburgh Steeler. We'll talk about that when we get to the Steelers. They also released Justin Simmons and Chris Manhurts. They're blocking tight end. Who did they really sign? Nobody. They re-signed their kicker. Ooh, fullback. Ooh. They've had a shitty start to the offseason. Um, they didn't really do any moves. And if you're a Broncos fan, I would be really pissed off right now. I'd be really ticked off. Um, I'm giving them an F. They really didn't do anything to, you know, wow me. They pretty much got rid of a lot of people and re-signed, like, guys that I don't give a shit about. So, yeah, you're getting an F. Yeah, I think you just probably – we. Had the two worst off seasons back to back, honestly. So this is an F for me as also. I'm not going to give it worse than the Cowboys because the Cowboys said, "Oh, we're going all in." Did nothing, even yeah. though they have a better roster. Just the whole hysteria, delusion there is what makes it funny and a lower grade for me. But yeah, we saw the Russell Wilson thing most likely. Uh, the Justin Simmons one hurts, but he's older, so he doesn't fit their timeline. But they're rebuilding too. But Nothing there. I don't even know who their quarterback is now. So they're it's, they might uh, be the worst team. They might be the Stidham. worst team in the league next year. <laughs> it's Jared Stidham. That's who they're. Yeah, they're gonna. They're probably gonna be the worst team in the league. I but, think what they're gonna do. They're gonna like draft a Bo Nix or like sign a Jimmy G, and figure it out. I think that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, I think Sean Payton would want his guy. I don't know if he wants to. He could bridge it with uh, Garoppolo and then bring Knicks along with him. I guess yeah. that that wouldn't be dumb to do. Either I'm kind of in the pro camp of having someone sit behind, uh, having your rookie sit behind a, a veteran, having them learn, and then taking over next year. I am yeah. in favor of that philosophy way of thinking. But yeah, it's an F for me. I think they might they might be the worst team in football, in my opinion. I wouldn't. In fact, yeah, I'm going to get away from this team. <laughs> they're pretty <laughs> bad. And they lost Jerry Judy, too. They're going to be shit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Enough talk about that shit team. Let's talk about the Lions. Uh, what did they do? So I know they acquired Carlton Davis. That was a good move. I like that. Got another corner there uh, in Detroit. But they did release Tracy Walker. He was a guy that's been solid for them. But they re-signed a lot of guys that I think – are crucial like Graham Glasgow and who else did they sign? Dan Skipper, you know, the legend Dan Skipper. Uh, other than that, they really didn't do much. Port eligible. Uh, I give it like a – I give it a C minus. I give it a C minus. They really didn't do much other than acquiring Carlton Davis. I think he'll be good for them. But, like, there's other guys out there that I think that they could actually, like, try and get. But I don't know if they will. So, C minus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Denver one real quick. I can't get over it because the post June 1st for Russell Wilson, he signed 1.2. And another reason why they get an F, they're paying like 37.8. Of Wait, 39. so maybe you can sign then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm like, you move on the lines. I'm like, I'm still, I'm still really perturbed by this. By oh, maybe stuff. you can sign then. All right. No I pay. think I've just been debunked. Because that Sunday night, like midnight, they they do the deal, 
And it's like, oh yeah, the Broncos are going to pay thirty-seven point eight million, and the Steelers are only going to pay one point two. I'm like, yeah, oh shit. <laughs> that's why the Giants had a exploratory meeting with him. I think I'm that's like, why, because they would only have to pay one million. It's the only reason yeah, why. Like, well, shit. It. Um, yeah. Um, so I guess you can sign. I don't, maybe don't become official till post June first. I don't know. I feel like they're going to have a press conference with him this week. I'm sure. Yeah. He literally posted a video with the they're black just not going to cut him. The jersey already. They're not going to cut him and clear him off like their cap until after. But they are yeah. going to pay. Maybe there's a loophole where they pay my guy like 95 98% of it and the Steelers pay like not even a percent of that contract like 1.2 of it. <laughs> so yeah. he's making 39 million. And and the most of it is he's not even on the team anymore. So that's funny to me. Maybe the, you know what? F minus. They they suck too. <laughs> F minus. I F like minus. It. That was bad. I had to think about that one. That's awful. Paying thirty seven point eight million to someone that's not even on the team. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Lions. Okay, I'll go ahead of you. I'm gonna give it a C. Uh, Marcus Davenport, low risk, maybe high reward there too. Uh, Dan Skipper is probably becoming one of my favorite players. Just report eligible, though. Um, <laughs> the biggest thing is not even a player. They got Ben Johnson back. So I think that – I'm not going to factor into the players thing, but that's big in itself. And you got Aaron – I'm a big Aaron Glenn guy, but he's pretty. he was pretty good last year, too, as a D.C. But, yeah, Ben Johnson being back is the biggest thing. So, But I think they get uh, – they don't really change much for me. Um, actually, actually, you know what? They released Tracy Walker, but because I thought about my birds real quick, they lost Garner Johnson. That's kind of big. I'm going to, I'm actually going to lower the C minus. They maybe they got a little bit worse on defense. And they could still, there's some safety still out there. So they, they may C minus if they get Justin Simmons or something, then it'll, go, up to, it'll go back up to a C. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going um, to be with you at a C minus. I forgot about the Garner Johnson thing. I tell you, yeah, they don't say that they lost those guys. It should yeah. say that too. That's it. Yeah. All right, moving on to Green Bay. I think they had a big start to this offseason, right? Signing Josh Jacobs. He is a great running back, and, you know, replacing Aaron Jones in that fashion it sucks for Aaron Jones just not being there because he's been a Packer for all this time. But you could tell he's regressing and can't stay healthy, but he had a great little playoff run with the Packers. So you got to respect that yeah. man. But yeah, replacing Aaron Jones with Josh Jacobs. I love that move a lot. Then you get a safety in Xavier McKinney, one of the better safeties in this league. I'll say he's top 10 and you paid him a shit ton of money, 17 million. The giants were not going to do that. And then you've re-signed some other guys, right? You got Corey Ballantyne, Tyler Davis, yada, yada, yada. And they also did lose Devondre Campbell, and they did that because so they could pay a Josh Jacobs, a Xavier McKinney. I like what they did getting a guy in the secondary because I think they lost someone that's also a free agent. I forget his name. Jonathan um, Owens they lost. Yeah, Jonathan his... Owens. So yeah. you replace him with Xavier McKinney. I like that. And then you uh, replace Darnold Aaron Savage Jones with Josh Jacobs. Arnold Savage also left. I forget what team he went to, though. He was another We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. Um, but I, I, I like what they did. I will give them a B plus, you know, I, I really like what they did. Josh Jacobs adds another element to their offense and Xavier McKinney is a great safety as well. So I give them a B plus. Yeah, I think B plus is fair. Yeah. I was maybe leaning towards an A cause I love the Josh Jacobs signing. I was like, Holy crap. That's great. That's an upgrade from Aaron Jones. He, Aaron Jones was really good for him too. Um, yeah, Devontae Campbell is pretty good, but I guess you're saving money by a uh, really CM too. He's a pretty solid player, but I do give him a lot of credit for the McKinney signing. Uh, as an Eagles fan, I did want him because he is a good player, and it'd be funny as crap too if we got him too. Um, so I wanted that for two reasons, but um, and it, actually three. He's an Alabama guy too, so I did want that. Alabama boy. Um, yeah, no, that, that was good signing. McKinney's going to play well for them. Same with Jacobs. That's going to be good move for him. I think I'm around a BB plus with you also. So, yeah. But, yeah, they did lose a couple guys. But, All right. But they, they spent, and they normally don't spend a free agency. That's good. Yeah, I was surprised. Like, 
I didn't hear any talks with Josh Jacobs signing with the Packers. I thought he was going to sign a one-year deal with the Raiders from what I heard, but then magically he's just a Packer. I'm like, what the hell? That was crazy. That was just mind-boggling. But all in all, B-plus, good shit for the Packers. Um, Texans now. Let's talk about the Texans. A lot of re-signings. And I think – I think their big move was Daniil Hunter signing him. Monster deal. He's making like $25 million a year for the next two years. That's good for him. And then you also get Joe Mixon. I like that one a lot. And also re-signing guys like Dalton Schultz. Great move. You re-sign your kicker. You get Desmond King back, right? Jeff Okuda taking a, you know, a chance on him. And you also re-signing Noah Brown, who's a solid receiver for C.J. Stroud. So, I think they had a great start to the offseason for sure. And he also got Tommy Townsend, the Chiefs punter, who was pretty dang good. He's having a nice little payday, making $3 million a year. You can't complain about that. I would give them an A-. minus. I think I would give them an A-. minus. I really like what they did, getting Daniel Hunter, pairing him with Will Anderson, and, you know, getting C.J. Stroud at running back. There was talks it was going to be Saquon, but that fell through, and they got Joe Mixon, a guy who's been pretty solid for the Bengals his whole career. So I like what they did. I'll give it an A minus. Can you scroll down just a tad? I can't see the last name. Uh, was David Sharp tackle? Okay. Um. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm probably gonna go a little bit higher. I'm more a fan of this, I guess. I'm gonna give it an A. Uh, the, the, yeah, one of my favorite off seasons thus far. Maybe my favorite off season. In all honesty, that the edge with Daniel Hunter. They got Will Anderson now. They got Christian Harris. Their front seven is gonna be really, really good. And I love it that uh, Nick Casario was going all in while they have Stroud on a rookie deal. He balled out. They proved that uh, they could win with him, too. So they're like, all right, let's go all in. We got You got to capitalize on the rookie window before they get their big payday so you can sign and fill out the roster around them. And you still got uh, Nico Collins, Tank Dell. They still got a solid offense. Oh, yeah, you fleece the Bengals for Joe Mixon, too. You, you upgrade there from Singletary. That's going to help. Uh, that's going to help out Stroud, too, in the – Take some pressure off him a little bit. Yeah, he resigned. You still got Schultz and Noah Brown there, also, and you get better on defense. Um, they're gonna, they're gonna be. I know the Chiefs are probably the favorite to come out again, but sneaky bet they might do it. They might, they could come out this year. Maybe I feel like it's like top three. I think they're gonna win the South again for sure. But I think the three teams you got to think of is Ravens, Chiefs, Texans right now in AFC. In my opinion, they got better. Too, and they've made it to the divisional round last year. So you got to put a lot of respect. Love what he did last year, liking what they're doing now. They're, and, yeah, Strouds is only going to get better from from this, too, and their defense is going to be top 10 yet again. All right. Solid offseason for the Texans. Let's talk about the Colts. There was a lot of re-signings. They didn't really, like, sign any new guys other than Joe Flacco, so they – Locked up Michael Pittman, three-year deal, seventy million. What's up? Raquan Davis is not, not a bad one. Yeah, Raquan Davis too. They signed him, and they got Joe Flacco, and they re-signed a bunch of other guys. I I would give them, hmm, I give them a B. I give them a B for getting Michael Pittman back in there and getting him a long-term extension. I like that. Again, Joe Flacco, a solid backup quarterback. We saw what he was able to do with the Browns, one comeback player of the year. And he's had a hell of a career so far. He's been a journeyman the last few years. And then, yeah, um, I also like the re-signings of Jack Anderson, getting a center in there. Uh, Zarier Franklin, he's been solid as well. And, yeah, Raekwon Davis, a great defense alignment as well. All in all, I'll give it a B because you locked up Michael Pittman and you got Raekwon Davis and you got a backup that you can rely on in uh, Joe Flacco. So, yeah, I'll give it a B. Uh, can, can you rely on Joe Flacco, though? He, he didn't have a necessarily a good playoff game. He, he's a guy that can get you wins in the regular season. I didn't say he's going to be a guy in the well, playoffs. Gardner Minshew did that. They just – the running back dropped the ball at the end. They almost beat the Texans. Well, they weren't going to – this is a guy that's a budget-friendly quarterback. They're not going to pay Gardner Minshew all the money that the Raiders did. So I like that they want this yeah. route, a guy that, you know, has been in this league and knows how to play football and win you some games. So I think Joe Flacco is a solid backup yeah. for that deal. Yeah, their big moves were the re with Kenny Moore, who's probably the best nickel guy in the league. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr. is a very serviceable 
very solid receiver. And yeah, uh, Raekwon Davis was a good move for the defense. I'd probably give it a C plus. I think they get marginally better, in my opinion. Joe Flacco doesn't move the needle for maybe does Steve a little bit. I, I don't see much there. I think the only way the Colts are going to make a run is if Anthony Richardson stays healthy. That's the big thing for me. But yeah, they the big things were re-signings. They did what they had to do there. Raquan Davis is a pretty nice addition. So yeah, I give it a C plus. I think they get a little bit better. And they'll have it. I'm a fan of Steichen and what he did last year. So I, it'll be interesting to see what they do. And I want to see Anthony Richardson in year two because I think he has uh, he's a pretty special guy, uh, special player too. So we'll see. All right, moving on. We're talking about them, Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, let's talk about the guy that they acquired, Mac Jones, sixth round pick. He's going to be Trevor Lawrence's backup. That's an interesting pickup. He's a solid backup because he's not a good starter. We saw that yeah. in his nice yeah. little run with the Patriots, and it was a pretty bad bust in Mac Jones. He was a bust. Uh, but he did sign Gabe Davis. I like that because he's going to fill the void for Calvin Ridley, who has just left, and he went to the Tennessee Titans. He yes. signed a guy in Ronald Darby, right, veteran guy. I like that move. Um, you get Mitch Morse. That's a good center for, you know, Trevor Lawrence to protect him and keep him upright. But you did lose some guys in Darius Williams, who was a cap casualty. He was solid for them last year, and he's no longer on the team. And you also lost Rayshon Jenkins, another guy that was solid for them. But I did like that they re-signed Ezra Cleveland. He was solid when they picked him up at the trade deadline and, you know, signed him to a three-year deal. Once again, that's good for Trevor Lawrence. And, you know, I like the signing of Darnell Savage, right? Three-year deal, safety. You needed a safety in there. And they also re-signed the Ernest Johnson. So, all in all, not a bad off season to start things off, but you did lose Calvin Ridley, who I thought they were going to re-sign, and they were waiting until the new league year started, so they wouldn't have to give up a second-round pick to the Falcons instead of a third, but it is what it is. You still got Gabe Davis, so you fill the void a little bit with Calvin Ridley. He's no Calvin Ridley, but he's a solid, I say, receiver too, um, but all in all, I would give this, I give this a B minus. I give it a B minus because you lost Calvin Ridley and you lost some of those guys in your secondary, Darius Williams and Rayshon Jenkins, but they did get Darnell Savage, but I still give it a B minus. Yeah, um, I'd probably give it a C. Like You hit it on the head at the end there when they, you lose Calvin Ridley, who made the offense pretty dynamic last year, just couldn't get it done. So I didn't want him to stay in Jacksonville, but he moves on. Gets a really nice payday with Tennessee. So I, I don't know uh, Gabe, if Gabe Davis and Devin DuVernay are going to really pick up the Floyd, but they got Doug Peterson has some nice pieces to work with. He's still got Evan Ingram, right? You got Kirsten Kirk there still. So they got guys that and like Jamal Agnew, uh, ETN in the backfield that can be featured in the pass game as well. So the, the, their offense will still be okay. They'll still be fine, serviceable at best too. So, but Calvin Ridley is like a, a bona fide number one though. So that's going to hurt too, I think. You just kind of you, – you're kind of band-aiding it, and it might be shown in some games next year too. But, uh, yeah, like you said, Mac Jones was the most interesting one. He's a backup, going to back up there. And, yeah, Rayshon Jenkins kind of hurts a little bit. But I think – I think Darnold Savage is probably upgrade for that. I don't know how we don't know how much he's making too. That's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah uh, not, nothing too special. I give it a C. I still, I still think uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe the Col like the Colts. Maybe they're fighting for second place with the Colts. In my opinion, I think Texans are by far the favorite. In my opinion, I think they're above them. I think everyone else was kind of stagnant in their division. In my opinion, so I give them a C. I I don't think they did much. The Calvary really thing definitely hurts though. Yeah. They're, but they were making moves right off the bat. They were just doing boom, boom, boom. They were pretty aggressive early and getting the guys they want. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I give it a C. Man, they also tagged Josh Allen. I think they'll reach a long-term deal. It's just a matter of when. They, I they think. have to. Yeah. They have to, you have to prioritize that. Uh, the, the the line the line play. Yeah. And He's, Doug Peterson knows that, too. So mm -hmm. he'll, him and Trent Balky will focus on that, I'm sure. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about them. Kansas City Chiefs. I don't really think they did anything yet. 
I don't think they really did anything other than re-signing Chris Jones and tagging LeJarius Sneed and Drew Tranquil. Like they yeah. really haven't done anything, but they don't really have to do much yet. They're going to wait. They're they're going to play the waiting game, I think, the Kansas City Chiefs. That they're coming off they're winning two Super Bowls back-to-back, right? They don't have to do much. You got Patrick Mahomes. You still got Travis Kelsey. You still got Andy Reid. You'll be fine. Um, they're never a big player in the free agency game. I feel like they're going to go after some of the receivers still left available. Um, and, you know, getting Chris Jones back, that was a great move. Five years deal. He got a massive deal, $158.75 million. The man who got a payday, he deserves it. He's going to retire a chief. I think he's going to be a Hall of Famer one day. Um, but he did lose MVS, and they might trade LeJarius Sneed, and they might get some draft capital for him. So we don't know what they're going to do yet. I'll give them a B minus because they're the Chiefs. They're fine. They really didn't make any moves yet. But I think they're going to play the waiting game and they're going to sign someone later down the line. So I think I'll give them a B minus because they're fine. They're the Chiefs. They don't have to do much. So I'll give them a B minus. Yeah, man. $32 million a year for Chris Jones. That's that's awesome, especially considering when last year there was a whole contract dispute. He gets a really, really nice payday. Earned it, obviously. Balled out. Last year, best interior defensive lineman in the league. And it's not close. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to give it – I think it's early to tell. I think I was I was uh, seeing maybe they get like a Marquise Brown in there. That would be kind of a nice addition too. I think he would do well with Mahomes and that Andy Reid offense. I think that's interesting. Maybe it's – I don't think Stephon Diggs will happen. I don't think the Brandon Bean would trade with the No Chiefs. way. No way. Yeah, so – I think like, possibly. I feel like they might have to draft. I feel like Mar- Marquise Brown and Rasheed Rice would be interesting. You still got Kelsey. So, yeah, I feel like I think I'm going to give it a C. They just – Eric Smith Jr. is okay. But, yeah, you get Chris Jones back. I'm, I'm just grading it based on did you improve from last year or not. I just give it a C. I do think, though, they have to be worried about teams catching up to them, too. They are – teams were really aggressive in spending – uh, this past off this this uh, off season thus far, so they gotta be conscious of that that they're they're trying to catch up with them in the AFC and whole as a whole, and as well as the NFC as well, obviously. But yeah, I'm gonna give them a C, give the champs their respect. They didn't really do much to move the needle for me, but Chris Jones was massive though. That's big. Yeah. All right, let's talk about them Raiders now, Las Vegas Raiders. So. uh well, they do. They signed Mr. Gardner Minshew, potentially their new starting quarterback. We don't know if they're going to do something in the draft. I like that. He was a solid starter for the Colts when Mr. Anthony Richardson went out. Uh, Christian Wilkins, another big pickup. You know, having him and Max Crosby on that defensive side, the ball, man, that's that's a great move for sure. Um, and then they also re-signed Amir Abdullah, Andre James, yada, yada, yada. They cut Jimmy G. They cut Hunter Renfro. All in all, I like what they did, getting Gardner Minshew. Already amazing upgrade over Aiden O'Connell. And then adding Christian Wilkins for the interior of the defensive line. I like what they did. I'll give them a B right now. We'll see what other moves they make, um, but I'll give them a B. I like what they're doing. I like what they're cooking there in Las Vegas. I'm right with you with a B, too. I, the Christian Wilkins move was one of my favorites, uh, favorite moves from the offseason thus far. Uh, I'm going to love the pairing with him and Max Crosby, just getting after the quarterback. You have to get after Mahomes, who won a success with them, and Antonio Pierce won a game against them in Arrowhead, too. And then Christian Wilkins is going to help to that, too. You got to get pressure to Mahomes, move off this spot, obviously. Quarterbacks don't deal well with pressure, but when you have a great quarterback like him, Wilkins makes all the sense in the role to do that. So Tom Telesco made a splash there. That's a good first move, in my opinion, there as well. You did splurge a little bit on Gardner. I think that's a bit of an overpay for – I don't know. I, I guess he might start. I don't know. Uh, I, At the <laughs> moment, he's starting. So I don't think it's bad for a starting quarterback if he starts. Uh, yeah, I was thinking more in backup. I'm like, oh, yeah, um, no Jimmy G. Who's going to start for him? Okay, I guess you yeah, got to start. So like, yeah. Being a starter, that's not yeah, bad. Yeah, starter money, not bad. Oh, like backup money, though. Okay. Yeah. For the 12 and a half a year. Oh, uh, yeah. I give it a B no. just because of Christian Wilkins, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I like the move a lot. See if they get they get 
uh, aggressive for a quarterback in the draft, which I think yeah. they would. They probably yeah. will. I don't chances. know what draft pick they have, but we will see. I can look that up. I see. Move on. Move on to the next team. I'll look right, that let's up. Let's talk about them Chargers, man. L.A. Chargers. Um, they didn't do much because they don't have much cap space. They did a lot of cutting, but the big signing that they did was signing Gus Edwards, you know, a solid running back after you're losing Austin Eckler. Um, Gus Edwards, he had a solid year with the Ravens. He's a budget-friendly running back, and he can get in the end zone and – get you some touchdowns. Other than that, he's not a guy that's splashy and it's going to be a franchise running back for you. He's a, a workhorse back, I guess, that's going to be a running back committee. We'll see what other running backs that they sign. Um, they also signed Will Disley, and they needed a tight end after losing Gerald Everett. But the big move that happened today was they released Mike Williams, and they had to do that because they weren't under the cap so they had to get rid of Mike Williams. He's coming off a torn ACL. They're saying there's a chance that he might come back. He's going to explore the market, and if he doesn't find an offer that he likes, there's a chance that he might come back. And they also cut Eric Hendricks, who is now a Dallas Cowboy. They really didn't do anything splashy because they don't have the cap space to do anything. I'm going to give them – I'm giving them a D. Give them a D. I don't know. They really didn't do anything wowing to me other than getting Jim Harbaugh. But if we're talking about mm-hmm. players, we're talking about players, they got Gus Edwards and they got Will Disley. And you lost Austin Eckler, who's a guy that's been a workhorse for you yeah. for how many years now. So I would give them a D. They didn't get better. The only thing that got better is they got Jim Harbaugh in there and they got rid of Brandon yeah. Staley. That's the only thing that got them better yeah. so far. So, and they yeah. got uh... – they got a competent defensive play card, Jesse Minder coming in also. So they're going to just get better off that alone. But if we're just going off of free agency, it doesn't really do much for me. They give it a C minus because, uh, yeah, that group one's going to hurt a little bit. But I like Gus Edwards. He's a good back. He's a goal line back. But it's going to be, it still seems like the offense is going to be pass heavy. But I know Jim Harbaugh is going to do just fine with the offense. Justin Herbert will. Probably have one of the best years of his career with under him because Jim Harwell knows how to get the best out of quarterbacks, too. So, yeah, nothing nothing too crazy. You saw Keenan Allen, so, yeah, I'd probably go like C minus. I believe that's what I said. So, yeah. All right. Let's talk about the L.A. Rams. They got some offensive lineman help. They got Jonah Jackson – from the Lions, a nice guard, three years, fifty-one million. Got to build up that interior of the offensive line, and they also re-signed Kevin Dotson, who had a great year for them as well. Yeah. And then they signed Darius Williams, coming over from the Jags, and he's been solid for the Jags the past few years, and he's a veteran guy, so a guy they need in that secondary. They also got Kobe Parkinson from the Seahawks. I like that they got Jonah Jackson, but other than that, there's some guys that are veterans and, you know, will help the roster, but I don't think it's any splashy moves. I would give this give this a C plus. They got better with the offensive line, but other than that, there's no other players that really, you know, stand out and jump out. They're like, wow, they got really better. I'll give a C plus because you're helping Matthew Stafford and protecting him and keeping him upright. So, yeah, I'll give him a C plus. Yeah, like he didn't really lose anybody significant also. Uh, I like the corner they signed, Darius Williams. I believe he was already on the team before when they won yes. the Super Bowl yep. a couple of years ago. Really? He was pretty good. Brought him back. That's good. Um, yeah, protecting Matt Stafford from the interior is nice also. Got to protect them. Even though with a bad all line, I thought he played really well also last year. Um, yeah, and they still, they're still the same team. Still got my fag coach, and he still wants to coach. And that's all good too. So yeah, I think I'm with you with the C plus, my opinion. And yeah, oh yeah, the Raiders draft pick forgot to mention. They have the 13th pick, so they're in range for uh, a quarterback there. About Nick's just possibly. Wanted to, just wanted to mention that. All right, good to know. Good to know. But, uh, yeah, I like that. the Rams are nothing too C-plus. special, but yeah, not bad. C plus. All right, let's talk about the Miami Dolphins now. So they. Some things, and they cut some people. So, Emmanuel Agba is now a free agent. Uh, Keon Carson, Jerome Baker is the big one that they cut. Um, I don't think they did. Other than signing Jordan Poyer and Shaq Barrett, maybe Anthony Walker Jr. and Jordan Brooks. Other than that, 
I don't think they did anything splashy, splashy. Maybe Janu Smith. I'm going to throw him in there. Uh, they got guys to fill up the roster and fill up spots that they were missing. But I don't think anything splashy is like, oh, my God, they're Super Bowl contenders now. They're just getting guys to fill in the voids that they lost. Um, I give it a C plus. I give it a C plus as well. Again, Jordan Poyer in there. Now that's good. You know, in division competition coming over from the Bills, going to the Dolphins. You know, again, Jordan Brooks in there and Anthony Walker. I like the linebacker additions. Those are pretty good. Um, and Shaq Barrett, he's a guy that's, you know, kind of declining now with age, but he's still a solid edge guy for, you know, with now Jalen Phillips being probably out for most of the season because he tore his Achilles late last year. And Bradley Chubb's also hurt as well. So they're going to need a presence there at the edge rusher spot. So that's why they got Shaq Barrett. I, I like the moves. I don't think they got much better, so I give them a C plus. I don't think they got better. I th- I'm going to say I'm gonna say C minus. I think they got a little bit worse. Christian Wilkins is going to be a big loss for that defense. And also, you're going to lo- you released Ogba. Jerome Baker was a good cover linebacker. You lose uh, Fan Ginkle as well. They were pretty good with Fangio last year. Um, yeah, I didn't think he got so much better. Jordan Poyer, I think there's a reason why he got released. He still can give you something, but he's not that he's not that good anymore. He's older. Um, Shaq Barrett's serviceable. Uh, Jordan Brooks was a pretty good signing. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm not too sold on all the other ones. I think that Christian Wilkins, I got to knock it down, and they're going to probably lose Jerome Baker and Agba. So C minus for me. Yeah, that's fair. Um, next up, we got the Minnesota Vikings. So they lost Kirk Cousins. That's a big person they lost, right? The franchise quarterback, but they replaced him with yeah. Sam Darnold on a one year deal, prove it type deal. See what he does yeah. coming from the Niners. He was a backup. Um, other than that, they cut Madison, who was pretty much they the got Aaron Jones? what's up. You got Aaron Jones. They did sign Aaron Jones. Yes, that was going to be oh, the next shit. day. I was so talking they about sign Aaron Jones. Why'd you correct me? Huh? I've been saying, no, the Cowboys should get Aaron Jones. I did. I totally forgot about that. Oh, you said that? <laughs> yeah, I forgot he went to the Vikings. Uh, ah, yeah. That's Aaron crazy. Jones is a Viking. I like that move. Get to play your former team in the past. That's, yeah, Packers. that's right. And you're filling the void of Alexander Mad- Madison, so that was a good move. And then Sam Darnold, he's a guy that – he can, you know, be a bridge quarterback for you. He's not a guy that's going to win you a lot of football games, but he's a serviceable starter, and he's not awful. I don't think he's awful, but he's not a guy that you view as a franchise quarterback. He's a guy that's going to, you know, be a serviceable uh, backup for you, right? So we'll see what they do. They might get another quarterback in the draft or maybe even sign another one. Who knows? But uh, other than that, all they have is, like, Sam Darnold, for their quarterback room, and I like the addition of Aaron Jones. They really didn't get better. I would give them a C because you lost Kirk Cousins and you lost uh, Alexander Madison and you lost all these other guys too. Um, but Aaron Jones, it's a good pickup, and you already got a lot of playmakers in Jay Jettas, TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison. So, you know, getting Aaron Jones, that's a good pickup. I'll give them a C. Now, we were talking about Jimmy G earlier. I think this is a – oh, well, I mean, you got Sam Darnold there. I, I was like, maybe this team Jimmy G could go to, but Sam Darnold there, probably not anymore. So they're going to yeah. play they're – there's so many teams that could draft a quarterback. It's crazy. Um, just initially, I'm going to give it a C- minus because of the Kirk Cousins loss, but I like the Jonathan Greenyard signing. I forgot about that one. People. How did I forget about that one? Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that was a good one. Um, their, the defense was kind of bad. Uh, Flores, they're, they're prioritizing, prioritizing that, helping Brian Flores out, getting some good players. Like Van Ginkle has experience with him in Miami. So, yeah, and uh, Aaron Jones was good back, too. That is a good back to have also. So, C minus, but, yeah, the Kirk Cousin lost suck, and now they have to move a different direction. For, and they need to figure out the quarterback thing fast. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's talk about them Patriots. Um, hmm. What did they do? I know they got rid of Mac Jones. They traded him. So they signed Antonio Gibson and all this. Uh, I I completely forgot he was a free agent. Uh, They signed Jacoby Brissett. He's going to be their starter now for the moment. Uh, You got Austin Hooper. That's a solid tight end. And you also got Hunter Henry. 
I like re-signing Kendrick Bourne. He was a solid receiver for them. And sure. then who else did they get? Anyone else? They re-signed Jalen Rager. They re-signed Joss Uche. He was a solid edge rusher for them. And they re-signed Mike Owanu. He was he was a great tackle for them and one of their best players on the offensive side of the ball. So I like securing him and signing him to a long-term deal. Other than that, they really didn't get much better um, than, you know, re-signing their own. I don't know. I, I give it a C minus, a C minus, because other than locking up Mike Iwanu and getting you a good serviceable quarterback in Jacoby Brissett, you really didn't get anyone that, you know, wows me and is going to change the the franchise of the New England Patriots. So I give them a C minus because you you re-signed the guys that were potentially going to leave. So C minus. Uh, I'll go with you on C minus. I'm just indifferent about them. They're a rebuilding team. You got yeah. Uh, a it's not much they can do. Time. So yeah, they're going to rebuild. They need to get the quarterback. So Brissett is in there. Uh, probably going to be a quarterback competition there. They're most certainly going to draft the quarterback in the top three. They're not going to move down. They're going to stay in that top three. Maybe they trade up with the Bears. We'll see. We'll see what happens with them. But they're going to stay in that top three. Maybe they trade for Justin Fields, too. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen there. Maybe they bring in Justin Fields. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm just I'm just spitballing. But, yeah, I'm with you on a C-. minus, And I'm not going to ramble on. But, yeah, they resigned key guys, like you said. And, yeah, they didn't really bring anyone in. They did. They resigned guys that – they feel like can help uh, lay the culture down, and yeah, do do and uh, play serviceable football. Yeah. All right, Saints. Let's talk about the Saints. They really right. didn't do much other than signing Willie Gay and they're Excel. always in cap hell. They they have been in cap hell since Drew Brees always has been that. there and retired. Um, but yeah, Willie Gay, cool, great move. Tyron Matthew. Cool, great move. You got rid of Marcus May and you you signed a fullback. Wow. Uh, yeah, give me a D plus. <laughs> give me a D plus. I, I like signing Willie Gay. He's a solid linebacker and extending Tyron Matthew, but he really didn't do anything to get better. They did release Michael Thomas. Yeah, he failed his physical. Um, but other than that, they didn't do anything to get better. You lost Jameis Winston, um, but you know Derek Carr is your franchise guy. He signed him to that long term deal last year, so. It is what it is. There, I don't. I don't see them competing. I don't see them even making the playoffs right now, unless they do something in the draft that wows me. But yeah, D plus. They're not really getting that much better. Yeah, I still see them finishing third. Um, they they just got a lot they have to figure out. I don't know what are they competing or are they trying to rebuild. That's that's my question with them. But because they they should do something about their cap situation. Um, there, so yeah, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it probably like a, a C minus. I'll be a little bit nicer. <laughs> they didn't do much for me. Yep. All right. Oh, uh oh. Now we gotta get into it. Now this is where we're gonna take a little longer. Um, should we do the Giants and the Eagles right after? And then we'll talk about the Jets because you know we're gonna talk about the man. Right. The Let the me legend. see the. Wait, scroll down. Let me see the Jets real quick. Or should we do the Jets first? Do the Jets and I quick. Um, Javon Kinlaw, Tyra Taylor, congrats. Uh, C minus. You're not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really do shit. Uh, I like re signing Greg Gulag, and they re signed uh, their punter, Thomas Morstead. He was solid last year, and you get a backup guy in case Rogers gets hurt. And Tyra, solid. And you also got Morgan Moses. Not bad, not bad. Um, but yeah, C minus. They really didn't do anything. Simpson's also okay, but C minus. Not. They just need Rogers stay healthy, and that's the Jets done with. <laughs> now you can All go right. back. To All right, this this hurts, but here we go. All right, so let's talk about my New York Giants. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Saquon Barkley is no longer a New York Giant. Our face of the franchise is gone. He has signed with division rival, the Philadelphia Eagles. I like the move for Saquon, right? You get in the bag. You're getting paid. You're getting paid what like, twelve a year, potentially fifteen if he reaches incentives and all that. He deserved the bag. He deserved to get paid. I hate that he couldn't stay a giant. It hurts 
Hurts to stay. Hurts to say that he's a Philadelphia Eagle now. I hate that. Going to division rival, you get to stick it to the Giants twice a year. I like what he did. It was good for him. For the Giants, I understand why they didn't re-sign him. They're in the middle of a rebuild. That they, they, they don't need to pay a running back right now because they have other holes that they have to, you know, worry about right now. That's why they got Brian Burns, right? They got Brian Burns to, you know, pair him up with Dexter Lawrence and Kayvon to have that elite defensive line, build the trenches. I like the move a lot. Only giving up a second round pick and a fifth round pick for Brian Burns. Solid move. Solid move. You did pay him a lot of money. I didn't like the money that they gave him, but that was the only way to get him to New York. So I understand. Might have been a little bit of overpay, but I like that we have him on our team. Um, I also like the move of John Runyon. John Runyon, I, he was solid. I didn't know much about him. I did my little research. Only allowed one sack last year. Not bad. And he kept Jordan Love upright. And he's only missed zero games in his whole NFL career. So that is something we need. We need stability with the offensive line and a guy to protect your quarterback and a guy that's available and doesn't get hurt. I like the John Runyon move. And his dad, if you didn't know, he was, was, a, he was an eagle. John Runyon Jr., his son, is a guard. But John Runyon was a tackle for the Eagles back in the day when Strahan was playing. And Strahan loved going up against John Runyon because it was a rivalry there. And they were, they were a tandem that would always go off against each other. So if you didn't know a little backstory mm -hmm. about John Runyon, now you know. Uh, but, yeah, John Runyon, happy to have him on our team because we need a guard. We need a guard help a lot. I like the move. And then we also side Devin Singletary. It's a budget guy. It's not Saquon Barkley. You're not going to get the production you had with Saquon. But this is a guy that's familiar with the Dable offense and all that. And he had a solid year last year and didn't even start the whole year. He started, like, I would say halfway through the season, and he was solid. And he almost had 1,000 yards last year. Not bad. A budget running back. And that's what the Giants need right now. They're in the middle of a rebuild. They're not, they don't have the funds to pay a Saquon Barkley that much money because that's not what they need. They need to build the trenches and they can't afford to do that. And they can't afford to pay a Xavier McKinney $17 million. They just can't do that. They're in cap hell right now because of the Daniel Jones contract. I don't even know if we're still paying Kenny Galladay or whatnot. I don't know. But I think that Daniel Jones move, it kind of set us back a little bit. It kind of did. I think what the Giants are going to do right now, they're going to they're gonna draft a quarterback. I think that's what they're looking at. They're going to draft a quarterback at six, or they're either going to trade up for one. I think that's what they're looking at. The, uh, Dable and Shane and Joe Shane, they want to keep their jobs, right? So you draft the quarterback this year, and it keeps their jobs, you know, secure, I would say, for at least one more year. I think that's what they're going to do. They admitted to Mara. They, they screwed up. The Daniel Jones thing, it's a bad contract. It's a bad contract. But you could get out of it after this year. So Daniel Jones' contract's on the table. They're going to have to deal with it. It is what it is. Uh, but I like signing uh, Drew Locke. That was a good deal. I think he was a solid backup for the Seahawks last year. You know, he, he pro proved that he could win you some games. He beat the Eagles, and he filled in with other games as well. Uh, but And they also signed the tackle from the Raiders. I like that because – you're bringing over the Raiders offensive line coach. There's some some familiarity there and uh, Jermaine, whatever his last name is. Um, but all in all, I don't know. It sucks to see Saquon Barkley go. It does. Face of the franchise for the past six years. I understand why he did it. He, he deserves all the money in the world. He's one of the best players in this league right now. He's a top five oh. running back. He, he's a genuine guy. He's a genuine guy, and the Eagles are lucky to have him. I hate that he's going to be wearing green. I really do, but he deserves it. And uh, I, I don't know if I can root for him anymore and all that. I'm still rooting for the guy, but I'm not rooting for his team to have success. I'll say that. I'll say that. But I will miss him, and he was my favorite player until now. So, you know, he had to go to my most hated team. It is what it is, but the Eagles are lucky to have him. That's all I'll say. What was your grade for the, your New York Giants? I did not give them a grade. Um, I think the addition of Brian Burns was really great. I did not expect that to happen. And only giving up a second and a fifth round pick was solid. Um, mm -hmm. And then getting some offensive line help. You get John Runyon. You get Jermaine 
Uwarebaba, whatever is, I can't read it. Uwu Munor, I don't know how to say his name. Mm -hmm. However you say, I'm butchering that shit. Uh, but you sign him, and you sign John Runyon, and then you sign Devin Singletary to fill the void of Saquon, even though it won't fill the void. It's just a guy to be in there. I, I also heard talks we might be in the market for AJ Dillon. Who knows? I would like I would like that one two punch. I would yeah. like that. Um, you don't have but, a three back anymore, so you kind of you may have to go get it. You have to go running back committee. Yeah. I get that. Mm -hmm. I would give the Giants – I give them a B. I give them a B because they lost Saquon and they lost Xavier McKinney. I, I was thinking B+, plus, but just because they lost those two guys, it, it brings it down a little bit. Uh, but I like – you know, you got to build the trenches. You got to build the trenches for sure. Brian Burns is a guy that's going to fit in perfectly with Kayvon and Dexter Lawrence. Great pickup. I love it. And then you're building the trenches, building the offensive line to protect your new franchise quarterback. I think Daniel Jones is on his way out. He's going to be on the team this year, but I, I don't think his future with the Giants is much longer after this year. So we'll see what happens for the rest of the offseason. Sad to see Saquon go, um, but I, I, it is what it is. And to Tiki, I can't believe Tiki said that shit. You're dead to me. I understand. I understand from like the Giants Eagles rivalry, but like saying you're dead to me, like from a, a person perspective, it's a little messed up because he's he's a genuine guy, and I, he doesn't deserve that. Saquon had to do what he had to do. It was a business decision for him, and the Giants didn't offer him anything, so it wasn't his fault that he didn't resign with the Giants. That the Giants didn't offer him anything. So there's that. Um, but okay. all in all, I'll give him a B. It sucks seeing Saquon go. But uh, hopefully Brian Burns and company can stop Saquon from doing anything next year. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a full circle moment for me because I remember talking to you last year. I'm like, man, you're going to regret uh, paying Dale Jones all that and you let – you tag Saquon. You did it the wrong way. You should have picked up Jones's fifth year and pay Bar you could pay Barkley what we did basically. Even he probably would give you a little bit more of a discount to an extent. You know what I mean? Because he wanted to stay. So it would probably meet you more than what he was willing to meet with the Eagles. If I'm being completely honest. Yeah. Probably would he'd probably been more willing to compromise with you because he did enjoy playing for you. I will admit that. I do think that was Joe Shane's mistake there. They didn't offer him anything, till and uh, the Eagles jumped on it. I'll talk about the move on, from the Eagles' perspective a little bit later, but you have to mention the subtraction that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, talking about the Giants in totality, uh, the defense. Yeah, you're right. The Brian Burns deal, the trade itself, great. Second and the fifth, you fleeced them. You fleeced the Panthers for sure. I was like, damn, good, good ass trade. That's a good. That's a good redemption because I feel like it was like a couple hours after Saquon. So it was like all the Giants fans. Yeah. Were like, boo, it was, boo, it boo. was depressing. Like, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll, it's not Saquon, but I'll brighten up your day. It's a good, it's a really good player. So it brought it, it made you guys feel a little bit better. It should, right? I saw a uh, graphic, uh, something that said like to have seven and a half sacks the past five years. And it's like Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Brian yeah. Burns. Damn, yep. that's good. That's really good. Was it a steep price you had to pay? Yeah, you gave him a lot of money. I was like, damn, that's a lot of money. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't put it up there because it's it's like Chris John's money, what you gave him, for sure. Yeah, it's it like, like 30 a year. Huh? It's like, it's yeah. It's like, like 30 a year. Yeah, it's Chris John's making 31. So, yeah, it's like Chris John's money for Brian Burns. But you're going to have to sports if you want to get better. And – what I like about the philosophy, he's going lines and how you build a team is through the line. Ronnie, like you said, you laid out the stats nice. You even brought up the real the true elephant in the room is the whole Runyon tree and Strahan thing. That's the real elephant, not Saquon. <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, yeah, the Runyon thing, I was like, that's good. He's learning. He's learning there. I don't think if Gettleman was there, he would have. He may have, maybe would. I don't think he would have got Runyon. Nah, he would got Nate Soldier or Tyron Smith. He wouldn't have paid. Yeah, he wouldn't have paid that much. You gotta have to. You're gonna. You're gonna have to splurge on, on the on the on the trenches a little bit. They caught. They cost a bit. I don't know much about Jermaine, but I like the effort they're taking. 
you're kind of paying uh, Illumina or Starry money. Does that mean I'm not sure? I'll open up to you for a question. Is it with Jermaine coming in? I'm not going to pronounce his last name. Does that move <laughs> Neil over the guard? Because with his moves you're making, it seems like you're going to pick a quarterback first round. If I'm being completely yeah, honest, that's that's what I think. That's what yeah, I think seems that. like you are maybe maybe receiver if your guy's not there. If they go, if you try to trade up, you can't. They take your your top guy. Maybe yeah. maybe you go receiver. Like weak neighbors or something. Yeah, um, it depends if your if your quarterback's gone. By the time yeah, Jermaine goes. though he only allowed one sack too last year. Um, I don't nice. think he played the whole year though. Um, but yeah. I think he's a guy that could, he has experience at guard and he has experience at tackle. So he's a guy that's going to be a depth piece. And, you know, if Evan Neal doesn't pan out at tackle, maybe they move him to guard. They'll figure that out this offseason or training camp or whatnot. Um, but I think it's a solid signing. He's really excited to play here. I've been seeing all the tweets. He's like, I'm excited to put on that blue jersey, that 72. Like he was talking about it, multiple tweets. He's excited to be here, and I like that. And this guy's from London, right? And he grew up with watching the Giants game in London back in 2007 when Eli was playing or something. And ever since then, the Giants were his favorite team and whatnot. So it's a cool little backstory. Nice. I like it a lot. Um, oh. I don't know how great he is, but he does have familiarity with the Raiders O-line coach. So that's cool. Uh, hopefully this Raiders O-line coach is a good guy. I hope he is because our O-line has been dog shit ever since Super Bowl Forty Six. I will say that right now. We have not improved the offensive line since Super Bowl 46. Well, was it um, Super Bowl 58 or 59 coming up? Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> over, over a decade. Over yeah. a decade, right? So hopefully John Runyon and Jermaine can, you know, pick up the slack and stay healthy and protect our franchise quarterback, whoever that might be. Um I like the signing of Drew Luck. I like all that stuff. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I think Jermaine will be a good tackle for the Giants, hopefully. Hopefully. I'm hopefully they get a right signing because Mark Lewinsky did not work out, and that was a Joe Shane signing. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But Bobby Johnson's not coaching O-line anymore, so I'm happy about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. I, I Honestly – I was a little bit skeptic on Joe Shane because of like what I mentioned. He, I think he, I knew he fumbled. He fumbled that uh, Jones and Barkley situation, so he is going to pay for that. But it was his first move, so I give him great. You got to give him grace for that. He's learning, and I think this offseason he did he did a pretty nice job. Um, he did lose he, he did lose McKinney also, so I'm not going to meet you at a B, but I'm being unbiased as possible. I'm going to give him B minus. So I do think he got a little bit better. But we got Green Goblin though. He's good. I like <laughs> Goblin, but he's not McKinney good. I'm not gonna be I know. I just wanted to say that. I know. Bro, we got bro, we got Spider-Man and Green Goblin. We're set. We're yeah. set. I just think I just think <laughs> now it puts more pressure on you saw Vidori Jackson, right? Or is he we do not. He's a free agent. So. He's a free agent. Okay. Um there, so yeah, my point is find him again. Um, like know. Deontay Banks, your young corner. It's gonna put but with ha not having McKinney back there, it's gonna hurt your corners a bit, but you bring Brian Burns to bring pressure. So they don't have to cover as long. So that, that helps that a little bit. But if, if teams have, to, uh, have time to throw and for whatever reason, your guys are not getting it home, but they're going to have more one-on-one -on -one blocks. So they should get home more this year than they did last year for sure. But uh, yeah, I think you got a little bit better. I mean, I like the trenches. I always rate trench when you upgrade the trenches highly. But yeah, losing Barkley to a contender hurts. Uh, to in the division hurts. I mean, it and yeah, losing McKinney. McKinney was solid. I know you wanted him back. Um, I did. I you wanted one of them. You wanted one of Barkley or McKinney back. Who and I think really McKinney too, and he's gone. Uh, so I would go. I would go B minus. I'm not gonna meet you at a B. That's fine. But I'm gonna go. I think B minus is pretty fair because I do like the run in. I like the burn signing. Uh, I, yeah. Jermaine, I don't know much, know much about him. I, I like that too. And Singletary's not a bad back, but like yeah. you said, you go for a Dylan. I think that makes sense too because you, you don't have a three down back. I like that. I like that a lot. But Devin Singletary's pretty pretty good, and it made and it made sense. You got him right after the Eagles signed uh, Saquon. You basically like, all right, 
let's get Singletary in. He did. Yeah. And not a, not for a bad price either. So yeah. So I, I don't hate that move also. But yeah, you lose some guys, but Brian Bird still was was honestly one of my one of the best moves. Being unbiased. I, I did not see that coming. Money was good too. I like those two moves a lot. So B yeah. minus. I give it a B minus. B B minus. Yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah. We'll yeah. see if it pans out. We'll see if it pans out. I just like that they got a, only a second and a fifth it took to get Brian Burns. I thought it would at least take a first. At least. At least one. But they were at a fire yeah. sale, I guess. I don't no, know. you couldn't afford giving up this year's first. Well, yeah, I know that. But I'm surprised it only took a second and fifth. And we and we also have a second from the Seahawks for the Leonard Williams trade. So it worked yeah. out. We essentially traded Leonard Williams for Brian Burns. That's essentially what That's we did. That's good. That's an upgrade. That that was a great sure. move. That is a good upgrade. And and I don't no one traded a first round pick, obviously, for Brian Burns, but I feel like they would do it if someone gave up their first round pick this year because they don't have one. Yeah. So, so I feel out. like they would take they would take a first round pick next year though. But I feel like if they can have one this year, they would take it. Because I think there's some good options for it for them, like to get a oh, yeah. get like a Olu, get a Joel, get someone to help uh block for for, for that line. But yeah. Joe Shane, not a bad offseason. Uh, pretty good. He earned some of my respect there. I like I liked it. B minus. Mm-hmm. Not the best. Not certainly not the worst, though. Yes. It it fills the void of Saquon and McKinney for a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. I'll go B I'll go B minus. All right. Let's talk about them Eagles. They 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 made a lot of moves. Howie's been cooking. Uh I guess I'll start off. They got Saquon. That's a pretty damn good move. Um, he's stealing him from the Giants. Three years, $37 million. He got paid. He deserves the bag for sure. Again, C.J. Gardner-Johnson back. I like that. That might have been a little bit of overpay. But you get a safety in there and a guy that has experience with the Vic Fangio defense. It's a good move. Um, mm-hmm. You did lose Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox. They did retire, but... You know, that freed up cap space to go sign a Saquon and go sign a CJ. So it worked out. And then they also got Bryce Huff. Bryce Huff. I don't know what they're going to do with Josh Sweat or Hassan Reddick, but I would say Bryce Huff is an upgrade over Josh Sweat, not Hassan Reddick. So I would try and get rid, of, get rid of Josh Sweat. And then extending Landon Dickerson, a guy that's been a stud so far in his young career, Bama guard. I wish we had him. Um, and then Zach Bond, it's a, it's a nice, you know, deal one year. And then Matt Hennessy, another, like, depth piece. And then re-signing Braden Mann. And don't forget about Jake Elliott. That happened today. He's the highest paid kicker in NFL history, along with Justin Tucker. All in all, what would I give the Philadelphia Eagles? I don't know. For a draft grade? Think of between B plus and A minus. I'm gonna give it B plus because I feel like you overpaid for a little bit of these players. But if they pan out and they work out and the coaches know how to coach this year, you got a great roster on paper. And this team should be back in the playoffs and should be contending for a Super Bowl. But it all depends on how the coaches coach this year. So I'll give it a B plus. Saquon adding Saquon to that offense. He's finally behind a good offensive line. And that's great for him. I'm, I'm happy for him that he's actually going to ha- have a successful career if he stays healthy. I think he will. Now he's not getting hit 24-7. Um, but, yeah, I think Saquon is going to add a whole other element to your offense. You got to worry about Saquon, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, Jalen Hurts with his legs. Like, there's so much to worry about now on the offensive side of the ball. It's a great signing. I love that signing for the Eagles. It was great, but I hate it. I hate it as a Giants fan, but Eagles perspective is great because it just adds another element to your offense. And then defensively adding Bryce Huff. I didn't know much about Bryce Huff, being honest, when he got signed. I didn't know who he was. I just know he was underrated pass rusher from the Jets and he was undrafted and he's cool and all that. 
Um, but he's an upgrade over Josh Sweat. I've been looking at the stats and all that. He, he's a great edge rusher. Um, but, yeah, I think Saquon is is the move. And then adding C.J. Gardner-Johnson, that just icing on the cake right there, getting a guy that knows the defense, had a great year. They went to the Super Bowl with him, and then you lost him last year, and you got him back to fill the safety need because you guys were needing help in the secondary last year, and he was a guy that made – an impact for that defense for sure. So all in all, I like what the Eagles did. I'm going to give it a B plus because I think they overpaid for some of these guys, but what they did, I think will, you know, put them to another level and they'll be right on, right there on paper with the Niners and uh, the Cowboys. I, I don't even want to say the Cowboys. They're right up there with the Niners right now. I would say offensively, Defensively, I still feel like they have more work to do with the linebackers and all that. But offensively, they're right up there with the Niners. They got their CMC in Saquon. So I like what they did. And it hurts me to say that Saquon Barkley is a Philadelphia Eagle. I hate that. But it is what it is. It was, it was a good offseason so far for Howie Roseman and those dirty birds. <laughs> dirty birds. Hey, if it helps, uh, Boston Scott's available. You can have him. I, I saw that there's supposedly the Giants have interest. That might have been a fake report, though, by an Eagles mm -hmm. page I saw, too. So I don't know. I don't, I don't want that Giant killer. We already got Drew Locke, the Giant, or the Eagle killer. So it's okay. We're good. Yeah. Um, I'm floating. I'm floating between A minus A. I'll, I'll meet in the middle. You give it B plus. I'll go A minus. Yeah, where do I start? Uh, I guess we'll start with Saquon. I didn't really talk about him that much. I'll let you have your moment there. But, yeah, he's he's back in the state. He, Penn State guy, he's back. I love the fact that he's on the team, right? Uh, you mentioned the CMC effect. And I feel like a lot of the stuff they were saying when CMC went over, he's like, well, he's injured, but he's this, he's that. I've been watching what they've been saying on ESPN. They've been saying the same thing. And honestly, you would know better than I do because you watch more Giants game. He's been relatively half healthy the past couple of years. He just blew out what his knee, ACL, MCL that one year. He missed a lot of time. But other yeah. than that, been, I think he's played a lot of the ankle sprains, a lot of freak accidents yeah. is what he's been hurt with the past few years. He was healthy all the playoff season, but this year he hurt his ankle in that Cardinals game and he missed three games. So. Other than that, he's been pretty healthy. He's like 12, 13 games, though. That's not, I'll take that. Yeah, that's not awful. He's still there yeah, for the majority I'll of the season. That. And now you're behind one of the best O-lines in the league. So I think he should be in good company now and will be productive. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think the Giants had like the 30th or 31st run. Yeah, it was 31st. Now, now it was it's the first. 31st rush rate or whatever. And then the Eagles now, it's, first. So. Now it's the first run back one way. I know there's like a lot of memes like Kelsey's looking at the team. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I saw the video. I saw, the, I saw, I about saw it. him say he's not coming back. But he's like, I did know that they would make moves and they're going to compete. They're going to have a bounce back year. Mm -hmm. They're making a there. They should. Um, I'm liking just thinking of uh, the stuff Cal Moore could do with the offense now. He has so many weapons and he knows how to get guys open i know there's criticism there with him but he knows how to get guys open he had good success with the with eckler keenan allen the guys he has there now he has really good guys to do and it's like it's like for opposing teams how do you stop that offense do you sack up the box to stop saquon barkley how do you stop stop an rpo with him and hurts right do you take the hand off of barkley or do you play hurts and let barkley run on the outside i don't know how you stop that how you so do you leave the box open and you try to focus on AJ Brown and Devontae Smith? I mean, I feel bad for your Giants, man. The Deontay Banks is gonna have a tough time. <laughs> They're gonna have a good time. Right out. No, it's not just the Giants, though. A lot of the guys are gonna have a tough time, right? So yeah, that was good. Um, I know we're going pretty high on time, so I'll keep it quick. I like the Bryce Huff deal. Uh, congrats to him, highest undrafted deal. Uh, not quarterback, well deserved. He got ten sacks. I think that's going to help too, um, because I, I expect Jalen Carter to step up, being ten, 10 plus sacks. Also, Hassan Reddick should hopefully stay now. Maybe I feel like Josh Sweat's probably the guy going. 
most likely, and Reddick might stay another year. We'll see. Uh, Sack Bond is all right. Okay, signing. He's like a linebacker edge hybrid. Nothing moving the needle there. Matt Hennis, he's good. It might be the other guard. Jurgen's going to move over to center. Uh, yeah, and Devontae Parker was the interesting one to me. He might be wide receiver three, wide receiver four, depending on if they draft like a Lab McConkley from Georgia for like a slot guy in like the second round or something. But my favorite move was getting Garner Johnson back. I was really upset when we didn't get him back. Uh, the attitude and the edge that the defense, the team played with last year was missing. And he would obviously get that back. I think that was pro- probably my favorite move, if I'm being completely honest. I think it was because I did really miss him too. And Philly missed him. And I don't care what he said about Philly. He just plays with an edge. He always looks for reasons to motivate. We missed him. Uh, he's he's a pretty good tackler. He's okay, but he's a ball hawk. It's the thing. He gets picks. We did not turn the ball over at all last year. So I feel like that's going to help our corners if we draft a corner, whatever we do there. So it's going to help the corners out, having him back for sure. And there's still rumors about Justin Simmons. I don't know. I, I still don't know how the hell we have money to get him, but I hear it's like a steep I don't know. Yeah, I don't get this. Not. Probably not, but I heard rumors, rumblings, so I did have to mention that. But, yeah, I'll go – I'll sell with A-. minus. I still don't think how he's done yet. He's going to make another – not a little splash. He already made this splashes with Barkley and Johnson and even one of the uh, Bryce Huff in there too. So I don't think it's going to be a splash, but it's going to be a linebacker or maybe another safety in my opinion. And then we're going to go first round defense, maybe a corner in the draft. So I like the moves. Yeah, I give it a minus, man. I'm happy yeah. with it. Respectable grade. Um, I hate that Saquon's an eagle, but let's move on. I- Happy for him, happy for him. I'm happy for it that he got the bag, but I hate that he went there. It's okay, though. All right, we got we to gotta hurry up here. Let's get along. <laughs> uh, all right, Steelers. They cut a lot of people, and they got Patrick Queen. Let's just sum it up that way. They cut a lot of people. They got Patrick Queen. I like the Patrick Queen signing, but other than that, they didn't do much. I'm going to give it a... C minus, C minus. They did cut a lot of people. I like Russell Wilson coming in there. I think that's a upgrade. Yeah, yeah. why isn't Russell Wilson on there? That's I don't that. know why if he's on. That's why I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think it's a C minus because I think their quarterback play got better. All right, I'll, I'll like give it up. I like I'll the Patrick Queen signing. B minus now. Dante Jackson, you get from the um, Deontay Johnson trade. Uh, Miles Kilbrew is a good. Uh, which we call it, special teamer guy. He was a pro bowler there. Yeah, nothing too like, oh, my God, what a move other than Patrick Queen. I really like that move. Um, I think they I think they get a little bit better than last year, if I'm being quite honest with you. I think De- Dante Jackson might be better than Patrick Peterson was. Probably at this point in his uh, career. Yeah. Mm, I'll give it a B minus, though. I'm going to go... I might go. I might go B. I might go B minus C plus. I I don't think they had a better offseason than the Giants, so I'll go C plus. I don't want to put. Yeah, I can't. I don't think I could put them on the same level. So C plus. Because I really like the Patrick. Honestly, Queen. I might go back to C plus too. Yeah, if Russell Wilson and Patrick I'm Queen. Yeah, minus, but I'm like the Giants had a bet, better signings in my opinion, so I can't put them on the same. I'll go one below. I'll go C plus. I'll go C plus. Yeah. All right. Next up, we're going to go rapid fire here. Niners, here we go. Who they get? Leonard Floyd, I like that move. You're getting a lot of edge guys. You got Yeter Gross Matos, right? Two years, not bad. Jordan Elliott, another defender. And you got Malik Collins. They're, they're building up that defensive line because they did lose Chase Young and they lost Eric Armstead. Mm-hmm. So they kind of filled those voids. I like what they did. They did have Eric Kendricks, but he's gone now. He went to the Cowboys. He lasted for like 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, other than that, they filled the void of what they lost. I'll give it a C plus. There's no splashy moves. They filled the void of what they lost. So C plus for the Niners and keeping that D line somewhat intact. So I'll give them a C plus. 
I'll go C minus. Uh, Leonard Floyd's pretty good. He, Gross Mottos stinks to me. Doesn't move the needle. Don't care. Um, Jordan Elliott, uh, who the hell's that? Lee Collins, all right, run stuffer. Eric Armstead, Chase Young, whatever. They they lose. They lost that. Um, yeah, C minus. They didn't really do much to me, but they're going to still be good offensively. So. I think they lose a little bit defensively, but I think they'll still be okay. So C minus. Seattle Seahawks. Here we go. They cut a lot of people. Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, to say yeah. two of them. They re-signed Leonard Williams. I like that. And Noah Fant. You got to keep your tight end in there. And you got Nick Harris, a center, and everyone else. They pretty much just re-signed their own and signed a few guys like Rashawn Jenkins and George Fant. Uh, but other than that, I like I like keeping Leonard Williams. You trade a second round pick for him, you better keep him. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I, I still give this one a C plus as well. You lost a lot of players on the defensive side of the ball, secondary, and all that, and you get to retain Leonard Williams. C plus. They didn't really get anyone new. That wow. So C plus. Yeah, Jamal Adams releasing really, him doesn't. I don't care about that one. I think he's kind of. Overrated and watch. He's kind of poopy. Yeah. Quandre Diggs is still serviceable, pretty good. So that one kind of hurts a little bit. But Rayshon Jenkins should fill that void. Um, not bad. Uh, C plus probably is fair. You get Leonard Williams back. No offense, a good tight end there also. So yeah, C plus and Daryl Daryl Terrell going resign is good too. Yep. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So yeah. They re-signed Baker Mayfield. They re-signed Mike Evans. They franchise tag Antoine Winfield. I like those moves. And don't forget about Levante yeah. David, the bread and butter of their defense. I love all those moves. And signing Jordan Whitehead. Great. I'm going to give them a B because you bring back your franchise quarterback now. It's the era after Tom Brady. Baker, you got him a playoff win. You got him to the playoffs. You're keeping – your best receiver, probably the best player in your franchise history in Mike Evans. I love that move. And you keep in Antoine Winfield at the moment on the franchise tag, and you bring him back, Levante David. I love it. The The Bucks. I still think they are the favorites to win a division, and they're only getting better from here. Uh, so I'm going to give it a B. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll go with you on, on a B. I'm hoping that God uh, – Devin White's not there. He hasn't signed yet. I'm hoping the Eagles could somehow get him. That'd be pretty sick. I like that move because we need a linebacker. But talking about the Bucks, you're right. The re-sign, Baker coming back. Uh, that that was all good there. Antoine Winfield. Jordan Wayhead coming back. He was on that Super Bowl team. That's cool. Um, and LaFonte David coming back is cool. Um, yeah, B is fair. All right. Titans. They made some moves today. They got Calvin Ridley. Good for them. They got Mason Rudolph as well. Let's not forget about Tony Pollard, right? And then they signed Kenneth Murray. I guess that's another one to highlight there. I like signing Calvin Ridley, but you could have paid A.J. Brown the same fucking money, so I don't get that. But this is a different GM. This isn't the A.J. Brown GM, so I get that. I get that. It's not the same and all that, but they could have had A.J. Brown still. I'm just putting that out there. But Tony Pollard, I like the signing. You get rid of Derrick Henry, you fill in the void with Tony Pollard. He's a nice three-down back that did well for the Cowboys. Um, but I like Calvin Ridley. You're getting Will Levis, a receiver, and pairing him up with DeAndre Hopkins. That's a great one-two receiver punch right there. And all in all, solid offseason, I would say, to start things off for the Titans. I give this one a B. B. Um, I'll go below B minus. Um, I kind I like the Ridley signing, like you said, they could pay AJ Brown that, but I'm not complaining. Um, <laughs> no, you're not complaining. I know Titans fans are. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Tennessee. We were there last week. Uh, yes, sir. A lot of fun. Uh, a lot of fun. So I'm hoping for their success. Hopefully, Will Levis pans out. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go right underneath. I might go B minus. I like Kenneth Berry. Tony Pollard would do just would do all right, I feel like. And yeah, Calvin Ridley's Calvin Ridley's a solid star player too. So a lot of the work's gonna have to come in the draft because they do have to rebuild there. And the question marks are really like the coaching, in my opinion. We don't, I don't know what Brian Callahan's gonna do. I like the Denard Wilson 
right? He's he's their DC now, so I like that. So yeah, we'll see. See what happens. All right. Let's talk about these Washington Commanders. I know we could call it a fucking video. Here we go. Uh, it's a long one too, because they have the like eighty-five million cap. I know. I don't know, but these signings aren't splashy to me. What I'm looking at right here, though, these are a lot of old veteran guys. There's not a lot of young, talented players here. Well, these are well, guys. Quinn brought from Dallas too. Like I'm looking yes. at Biotis. I'm looking at uh, Armstrong. Who, who else? They just got uh, they Bobby get Wagner with the Seahawks though. connection, right? You got to get Neville more, maybe. I don't know. I, some of these signings are cool and all, but I don't know. I, I still give this a C plus. I'll give it a C plus. You're getting guys to fill in voids that you have yeah. at every position, right? You're getting some familiarity with all those Cowboys guys and Bobby Wagner from the Seahawks. You're getting Jeremy Chin. I like that move. Uh, Marcus Mariota is going to be your backup. Cool. He doesn't, you know – Wow me. Um, Austin Eckler, he's getting paid pennies, man. I thought he would get more than that. That's sad, but he is an aging running back, so whatever. I don't know why he wouldn't go to Washington of all the places, but they probably gave him the best offer, so he took it. Um, and I like Frankie Louvu. That's a good signing for linebacker. Um, but, yeah, Zach Ertz, wow, cool. He's old and washed at this point. I don't care. Um, these signings, I, I give it like a C. C plus C. I'll give it a C. I'll give it a nice C. You passed. You did a good job. You signed some veteran guys, but like they're not going to change the culture around. These are guys just to fill the voids of positions that you're losing this year. So all in all, I give it a C. It is what it is. Yippee, Washington. Yeah, I, I just feel like they're bringing in uh, guys that uh, Dan Quinn wants to build a culture around, like Armstrong, he knows uh, Dan Quinn, how he wants to play his defense, right? And, uh, yeah, so they're going to want to play a certain type of way. Uh, Biotis is there. So I do like um, – they're going a little bit on the trenches a little bit, so I like that. Jeremy Chin signing was pretty good also. I know he can play also. And, yeah, they got Equa for a steal also. Yeah, um, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to – they're – uh, the quarterback, if it's going to be Drake May, should have an interesting thing to work with there. Interesting core to work with. I'll, I'll go. Do I want to put it B minus? Maybe I'll put it B minus. I know it, I put the Giants B minus, but I didn't think it was bad. I think they got a little bit. I think they got better. It's not like a Brian. It's not on the Brian Burns level, but the reason why the Giants grades are higher because you've lost two guys. So. I feel like I feel like it's like a B minus C plus. No, nah, that's a C. That's a C. I don't know. They, they're not gonna make the thing, but I kind of I kind of like what they did. You got Equa for a steal. Uh, Biotis is serviceable. Armstrong's pretty good. Allegretti, I don't know how good he is, but they're all old. I like addressing the trenches a bit. Um, it's all right. And I like uh, Jeremy Chen. And Bobby Wagner's a culture guy. Nothing special there, but you got to help the young guys, though. You got to help be the leader. And the yeah. connection there from Seattle. It's all right. You gave it a B minus. I'll give it a C. I think we're going to end the video off there. What do you think? You think you think we're going to end it now? <laughs> no, nah, we're, we're so close to two hours, so. Oh, uh, we got to stay for seven more minutes? Hmm. No. Uh, um, but yeah, there you go. And the, yeah, free agency reactions to all the 32 NFL teams. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, drop a like, subscribe, and you know, make sure you go follow our socials. We got a link tree, Instagram, TikTok. If it's still you know available in the U.S., we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we got X. We got five months. We got five months. Okay. We got X, we got Facebook, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. This is a podcast, so this will be on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's a long one. We were yapping, but, you know, we had to get our thoughts out there. Yeah, we'll we talk thought about all these free agents, and we had to talk our peace of mind about Mr. Saquon Barkley and all the Eagles and Giants 
news that went down because, you know, that's our favorite team. So it is what it is. Deal with it. Uh, but, yeah, any final words before I sign off, Justin? No, not really, man. I think that was a good way to close it off. There's still some uh, free agents like Marquise Brown, Justin Simmons. We'll see where they go. Odell Beckham. Oh, no one how things – Oh, that will back on sure. He's going to the Chiefs. It's going to happen. Knowing, knowing this, we're probably going to uh, end this, and some and someone's going to sign. And we'll be like, probably. Oh, we could maybe, I'll, maybe I'll add it, and we could talk about it, and we'll make it two hours, right? Yeah. yeah. I like that idea. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm like, damn, we could have made it two hours. But, no, uh, this was a lot of fun. I enjoy talking about the offseason. I feel like it's it's been crazy. It's been uh, some unexpected moves happened. Um, a lot, a lot to like, a lot to laugh at, <laughs> a, a lot to be like confused by. But yeah, yeah, that, that's the NFL, so that's why we like talking about it. So yeah, it's been fun, man. All right, I think we're gonna end it there. So if you guys enjoy, once again, leave a like, subscribe. And we'll catch you guys later. Benchwire, out, man. <laughs>